see. Um, basically, I had gotten a similar uh, route earlier in the game. Um, I broke on it a little bit too late. Uh, I tried to get the strip. He had a small game. Then I got the same look earlier in the game. And I knew they were going to come back to it again, especially because it was a third and short, or well, third and medium situation. So I needed to just drive it, you know, get my eyes on my man, drive it, and put it back for the ball. Coming out of the gate, second half after the first half, you struggled. How important was it to make a play like that, to come up with a turnover? Uh, I mean, it was definitely uh, important uh, just to kind of change the momentum around with the game. Uh, but I knew just, you know, as a corner, you just do your job throughout the game. You're going to have one of those plays where you can make a play on the ball. So I'm just glad, just glad I was able to do that. Once you made the pick, what's going through your mind? Uh, I'm trying to score. Yeah, I've been trying to get in. I've been close a couple of times. So I really just wanted to get into the end zone and really make a play for the defense. Getting the defensive score is really exciting for our team. So. Cam said you got caught by an offensive lineman last week. That's not true at all. Uh, <laughs> I kept telling Cam, I think I made a couple guys fall on that play too. Uh, I said maybe if I had his blocks. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Cam's fine. I'm going to talk to him after. John, you played against them three years ago, or four years ago. Uh, can you do you remember anything from that game? Your first one of your first um, games. I think I had one of my first pass breakups. In that game. I think I was telling my roommate that uh, um, last night, and then it was like a monsoon. Like it was super rainy. It was really rough playing in that game. So I remember a good amount of it. What were they doing offensively in the first half to, to, to stay on the field? Uh, they were doing a really good job running the ball. They, their time of possession was, was a little crazy in uh, the first half. So uh, we needed to stop the run, and then they were hitting a couple of those vertical shots. Uh, Nunn was making some really good plays. Um, and we knew that going into the game uh, just from watching this film last year. He doesn't have a ton of it, um, but we, we watched a good amount of it. We kind of knew that he was definitely going to make a play on the vertical ball. So. How does getting hit in the mouth in the first half help you guys going forward, do you think? Um, I mean, we always know we had to come out fast, and we just had to go back to the film, look at the things we need to improve on and make the corrections. Um, um, it didn't hurt us tonight, but it could hurt us later on down the road. So. Did anybody say anything at halftime in the locker room, coaches, players, anybody? I mean, yeah, it's a couple of guys kind of riled up. Uh, you know, anybody in particular? I mean, pretty much there was a lot of people on the defense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't really, I guess, Seen out a bunch of people because it was it was a big group of people, but um, you know we were really composed and ready to come out and play this game. Right? Given what you've been through with the injury, you, your your team really needed a big play. You returned that pick six, hundred thousand people screaming under the lights. What's that moment like for you, and how fulfilling is it? Uh, I mean, it definitely means a lot. Like I do, um, you do a ton of like visualization. You kind of imagine just being able to have that pick six and take it back. Uh, so. No, it was really exciting. I was just happy uh, for our team. I was able to help give us the lead and make a play for our defense when we needed it. John, Coach Franklin said that you know your teammates, when you make a play, your teammates have a different reaction on the sideline because of the respect they have for you. <laughs> how, how do you how do you get to that place as a player? What do you think you've done to earn that? Um, I think you just you know you just kind of be genuine. Like you just keep it real with the people around you. The guys and the team know that. And I'm somebody who I can come to, and I'm gonna just I'm gonna always tell you the honest truth because that's how I am with myself. And then at the same time, uh, just how I am with them because you know even though I've been playing, you know, I've been just my fifth year now, I still ask some of the freshmen. Like, I see a freshman do something, I'm like, yeah, what were you thinking on this play? Like, why you did that? Like and stuff like that. So you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to ask somebody who's like below me as far as experience. You know, like some of the stuff they did. Like I'm not, I'm always just trying to learn and improve and about the guys around me, so I'm kind of always be that resource for them. So. A minute later, Sean finds Pat, another touchdown on the board, total, total D different game on the scoreboard. What did that tell you about your team to, to be able to swing momentum in such fashion? Um, you know, we were just excited to get that momentum change. You know, we knew Cliff could make the play. Uh, I know seeing him run down the sideline, uh, he should have scored. Uh, but, you know, that's just Cliff's a, a really ultimate competitor. So I knew coming out in the second half that he was going to be ready to go. How did he handle himself at halftime with, with the three-point deficit with the offense from what you saw from your side of the room? He is. He just really, really good composure. He's not getting wild enough. Like he knows he can make all the throws. He knows he can make the plays. Um, he just got to really show themselves. And, you know, he knows he has to execute on them. And that's what he did in the second half. John, was that your first pick six here? Yeah. That's what, first what, so as that unfolds, what's kind of going through your head? Uh, I'm just trying to score. I was I looked back at first to see if the receiver was behind me because usually this receiver it would be the one that make the play and try to tackle you. And then I saw the quarterback in front of me with the whole defense in front of me too. So you know I was just excited. What did it mean to get that under your belt? Because I'm sure that's something you've been visualizing. Um, you know it felt good uh, just finally getting in the end zone. I feel like it's been since high school, so uh, it definitely felt good. Can you take us through the pick for those of us who were not here here when you talked about it earlier? Um, yes, you did. 
basically a uh, third and medium situation. They had run a similar route before earlier in the game for about a four-yard gain. Um, and I saw the same look, the same release from the receiver, the same tempo, everything, and I just looked at Charlie. Now, what did riled up look like at halftime? I think I heard you say guys were riled up. What did that look like? What did that tell me? Um, I mean, guys were just like, you know, we hold ourselves to a really high standard, and we felt like we weren't meeting it in the first half. So dudes was more so – it wasn't even more so uh, mad, I would say, about the scoreboard. It was mad about the way we were executing. And we weren't playing up to what we felt we should have been playing to. And that's just uh, what guys were saying in the locker room. What do you think was the biggest problem for you guys as a defense in that first half? Um, I mean, they did a great job up front blocking with the run game. They eliminated a lot of TFLs. Uh, the quarterback did a good job getting the ball out of his hands fast. He really wasn't holding on to it. Um, and I think their O-line and running backs did a good job pounding the ball, and then you had none making uh, uh, plays on the vertical ball, like really making plays to contested catches. So they made a couple plays. Do you think the tempo was a challenge at all? I don't, I don't really think it was necessarily the tempo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you know they were just, they were they did a really good job executing a really well coached team. So we kind of knew that going into the game, mm -hmm. uh, we just needed to adjust. What did you learn about your defense tonight then? Um, well, we know. Know, when we get close to that red zone, we start to tighten things up really well. Uh, but we know that we just need to come out faster and execute a lot quicker. We need to be better at what we're doing, especially in, in stopping the run and the vertical, uh, the vertical 50-50 balls. We need to eliminate those. Sean, being able to flip that switch inside the red zone, is that, is that part of an identity that you guys want to establish, yeah. that that meanness, nastiness takes place down there? Yeah, definitely like sudden change defense, you know, after the defense, the opposite defense may make a play or being in the red zone, you know, we look at it as an opportunity to make a play for us. You know, we know we need to stand up and be ready. And we need to play great defense in the red zone, you know. Even if a team drives the length of the field and they only get a field goal, like that's that's major. You know, obviously you don't like them to drive the whole field, but if you get them to the red zone, hold, hold them to the field goal, that's good defense. Did you feel like your interception return maybe uh, took a jinx off the defense? Did you guys ever start to feel that with lack of fumble recovery, sometimes not getting uh, able to get in the end zone? Nah, I don't think we so, like, we're so conscious of that. It's just something we always try to do. We always want to score. We're not really thinking about you know, the plays that we didn't make and stuff like that because we look to improve on uh, a lot of those things. Like, we drill the fumble recoveries. We drill the interception, things like that. Sometimes um, it takes a little bit longer to translate them. So. John, from what you've seen, what makes Jahan Dotson a difficult matchup for defensive backs? Uh, he's smooth. Like he's, um, you know, he's a lot faster than people think, and he's playing a lot faster than last year. Um, his route running is great. Um, he's super competitive in his hands. Like if that ball gets in his hands, it's a, like he's catching the ball. So that's the one thing I always tell. I went against them all camp. Um, I was telling him, like, man, I know when I go against you, like, I cannot let the ball touch your hands. Because, like, even if I'm punching through it, he still has, he has strong hands and uh, he's, he's fast and quick off the line. So. Another sophomore, PJ must have grew. Strong start, it seems, on the season. What have you seen from him so far in 2019? Um, he's clogging that thing up in the middle. He's playing really physical, uh, really strong. Um, and he looks really confident out there. He's definitely really confident, I would say. Coach Franklin mentioned having a conversation with you and your family at the end of last season about your future. Mm. What was what was that conversation like? What do you remember about it? Because I'm, I'm thinking I know what it's about. Um, I pretty much just said, like, uh, and we, we were all pretty much on the same page. I was just saying um, the biggest thing, even I tell Coach Smith now, is just continue to be really hard on me. Like, don't yeah. coach me. Like, uh, coach me, I guess you want to say, like, coach me as if you're coaching somebody who was just coming in here. Like, stay hard on me. The things I need to – we all know the things I need to improve on. Keep – even when I'm getting better at them, keep – keep doing it over and over like keep like don't let me get away with nothing in practice like just stay hard on me and stuff like that because you know i'm coming back for fifth year uh i need to improve and i want to get better at certain things and i just need y'all to stay on me and you know, i knew they were going to do it but i just wanted to overemphasize it because i know sometimes um for people who've been in the program for a while they you know you, mm -hmm. you get a certain amount of respect and um you're able to do a, a couple of things differently but i just told them like just stay on me stay on me and they even told coach smith that last week i said just stay on me stay on me I'm like, did you do that this week yeah, like he don't let me get away with nothing. So, really? <laughs> nah, like he don't like he's he's on me with I things like thudding up in practice, mm -hmm. like stuff like the tack man. You know, like I gotta thud up every day in practice, and I told him that like the Pierce tag off, like man, I need to thud up. Like this is what I want to get better at. This is this is translating, it's translating. And you so, kind of figured that out last year, right? Wasn't that part of yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, just you know, just continuing to have those practice habits, and if you notice at all that maybe I may have slacked off on a rip or anything like that, like I need to I need to hear it. Like, so.
they pretty much had a conversation yeah. about. How much does that, that benefit you? Um, I mean, it, it, it benefits you a lot because, you know, sometimes uh, you may not notice that uh, you may not have been doing something, uh, I guess, as well as you may have thought. So when you have people on the outside looking in that know what it looks like when you're at your best, that know what it looks like, um, they can always constantly critique you and, and let you know uh, if you're not doing it the way you're supposed to. So I appreciate that feedback. Is this your best that we've seen since you've been here, you think? Um, I think so. I feel like I'm just, I'm really locked in at doing my job. Like before, um, there were, when my film study, I trusted so much that sometimes you try to play outside of defense a little okay. too much. And uh, just trusting my job and then just working even harder in practice, even the, the little things I feel like I need to get better at, just continuously doing them over and over again. I feel like it benefited me a lot. Going back and forth between outside playing nickel as well in the first half, um, how comfortable do you feel going back and forth between those two roles? I mean, Coach has talked about how important you are playing that star role. Um, I mean, you definitely get used to it. Uh, I've been doing it all camp. Um, but you just got to make sure that you remember certain – it's more so like the sp splits of a receiver and stuff like that are going to tell you a certain thing about the route tree. And it changes a little bit from the slot to outside. So just making sure you're able to flip that switch quickly in the game and realize that – and then you have to study film even more because you're getting different routes from the slot and outside, uh, different types of releases and stuff. So just being locked into that. Do you like having that extra responsibility? Yeah, it gives you more chance to make plays. Like as a forward player, you want to be versatile so that you can make plays in different areas. Like you don't want to just be stuck in one thing. So I, it allows me to just play a bunch of different parts of the, of the game and be an impact at either part. So. Do you think that paid off tonight? Last one for John. Going back and forth, playing outside and inside on third down. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, like we had, uh, like when Nunn was outside, um, I was able to transition outside with him even in a third down situation. And Lamont was able to come in and play the start. Or even earlier in the game, I was able to transition uh, back into the nickel um, for things like blitzes and stuff like that. So.